Hi, I'm Mark Graham. Today I'm going to teach you how to swap out the auger motor on the chimp. All right, to remove the control board, we're simply going to remove these two screws and pull the board out. But the harness right now is secured underneath. So the first thing we need to do is remove this bottom pan, which there's four screws holding it on. And that's going to give us access to cut some wire ties with the wire cutters. That's going to loosen that up so we can get the board out and get it unplugged. So first thing I do, I'll remove the bottom screws. Okay, now that I got this bottom thing removed, I can get underneath here and start cutting some ties. All right, so we removed the bottom panel. We cut the wire ties that are securing the wires to give us some slack. So next thing to do here is just to remove the two screws, holding the control board on. Now we have enough slack to remove everything. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the RTD. Um, there is different styles of boards out there, depending on what model you have. This one simply has a plug. There is some models that have this style as well. The RTD actually goes into these and there's two small screws that you loosen to pull the RTD off. So depending on which size, uh, what style you have, uh, that's how you disconnect it. The plugs are the same. You simply pull them out and just start unplugging them. And there's board removal, easy as that. All right, so we got the control board removed. The next thing to do is to get this hopper taken off. There's two screws in the front, two screws in the back, four screws inside. This hopper will come right off, give you full access to your auger motor. All right now that we got the hopper off, you can see the auger motor is right here, easy to get to. So as you can see inside here, there's a Allen wrench with a small nut on the other side. We simply get that Allen wrench, loosen that nut, and that motor will slide right out. All right, so once we get that screw and nut removed, We can pull the orange wire through the slot here. Loosen the wires and the motor simply slides right off. Easy as that. If for some reason that nut and screw are not in the right orientation, um, what you may have to do is inside here, there is a Phillips screw that we can remove. And this will allow your, actually your whole auger to come out and you can spin around here and get that screw a little easier. Or if you get an auger jam, that one screw allows this whole thing to slide out. To put it back in place, you can see there's a pilot hole. Slide that in until the hole lines up. Reinstall the screw. Take your motor here, reinstall your motor with the coil face in the back. Line up your hole. Reinstall your screw and nut. So our motor's secure, next thing to do is put the hopper back on. All right, so to install your control board back in place, uh, again, just go ahead and hook your RTD back up here. Make sure it locks in place. If you have the other style RTD, take your wires, it doesn't matter which way they go, put them in place and tighten the two set screws. And then we're just gonna start plugging components in. So the first one is our purple. That's gonna be your two braided wires, which is your igniter. Next one here is green. That's gonna be your auger. Next one is yellow. That's gonna be the purple. And of course, black and white is gonna be your power, which we'll plug inside to the black and white. Once we get that plugged in, now it's a matter of putting these wires back down in here and we're gonna secure from underneath. We'll re-secure here with two screws. Then we're gonna go underneath and uh, to the best of your abilities, use a zip tie. 
get it back to basically where it was in the beginning, just to make sure that the wires are clear of the fan that cools the auger motor and the fan that feeds the fire. There's two fans there. You want to secure those wires with zip ties just to make sure there's no interference. And uh, once you get those things secured, put your bottom pan on and you're good to go.